premier. Um, when the, the black loyalists and the, the black refugees arrived in Nova Scotia in the 1700s and 1800s, uh, they were treated uh, unjustly when it came to how land was allocated to them. Uh, they were never given clear title to their land, uh, and many of their descendants are now uh, without title, uh, present day. Uh, so that means that even though uh, they pay taxes on their land, they cannot uh, legally sell it, upgrade it, uh, or pass it down to their children. Uh, as, premier of no excuse me, as Premier of Nova Scotia uh, and as a human being, uh, what is your uh, reaction uh, to this situation? Uh, it is fundamentally wrong. It is rooted in systemic racism that was a part of our history. Uh, it was a wrong that has taken far too long to correct. Uh, to be perfectly honest, when I, I was the Premier for a few, a few years before I actually realized uh, that was the case, that people that were living on their own property for centuries and generations and still didn't own it. Uh, all of us pride ourselves on the capacity to be able to at some point hopefully have a property that we build some equity in and, and sustains us as we uh, go through life. Uh, and we often use that property to leverage money uh, for other things. Uh, and the fact that there are uh, too many African Nova Scotians who are unable to do that. Mr. Premier, um, last, pardon me, in the last year, um, you've kept your promise to pick the landing First Nation to close Boat Harbor. And uh, you've apologized for systematic racism uh, in the province's justice, justice system. Um, what do you have to say to African Nova Scotians uh, who are still struggling to get legal title um, to their land uh, centuries later? I, I would say to them, uh, we're, we're here. We, we've heard you. We hear you. Uh, and we want to execute on the fact that you deserve to have title to your property. Uh, we're working diligently. There's uh, uh, around 500 and. 30 properties that we have. We know we've done about 170 of them have actually clear title. Uh, there's another 250 or so that are in the process of that, uh, of at some form between when they we've started the process of title, so they'll be in, in ownership soon, and then the remaining uh, we'll continue to work on. Do, do you feel um, there would be an apology perhaps in order for them as well? Is that something that would be down the line to think about well that. I for most people are uh, most people are grateful to, to be finally having someone deal with it but I have said this many times uh, with inside of our institutions uh, systemic racism has existed uh, uh, this isn't not only the issue of land title I, I look at the issue of home for color children uh, you mentioned boat harbor uh, there are uh, there were and still are serious systemic issues that we have from an institutional point of view that we need to continue to tackle. One of my goals when I became Premier was really to try to have our institutions reflect more of who we are, see ourselves in them. Uh, there were too many Nova Scotians who never saw themselves uh, in so much of so much of what we do in government, uh, in judiciary, uh, the, the, you know the very uh, institutions that we should rely on and have faith in, too many people didn't, and African Nova Scotians are one of them. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that we now have uh, a provincial uh, court bench uh, that has gender parity but also uh, represents who we are, reflects who we are. African Nova Scotians see themselves sitting on the bench. Uh, the Mi'kmaq see themselves sitting on the bench. Uh, for far too long, uh, they didn't. Uh, who, what you saw was people who look like me, uh, and that's not who we are. Uh, it's not the kind of province that will allow us to achieve all we can be. Uh, so uh, it, it, the issue, uh, as the leader, uh, the premier of this province, I, I, when I assumed office, I accepted uh, all of the decisions that were made behind me, and I certainly would apologize to anyone uh, who for uh, decades who have been trying to have title and have not uh, received a welcoming support from their government. It's completely unacceptable. That's why we m began to work uh, diligently to try to make this happen. So some people uh, in North Preston uh, say that uh, nothing has changed for them uh, since funding uh, was announced. Um, and some of these people we've spoken to, um, or our colleagues have spoken to um, throughout the course of this project, um, they say that uh, government uh, isn't consulting uh, with communities and that their voices uh, aren't being heard uh, on the issue. Um, what, what would your response be to that? We've hired navigators to go out in the community uh, to work with families and communities 
to deal with some of those issues that uh, that an individual may have. Uh, my my understanding is that those have been moving along, uh, addressing them family by family. Uh, if there are still people who are feeling that, it, it, you know, oftentimes this never moves fast enough, and I especially when you waited decades in some in some cases generations. Uh, to see this come to the end, I, it, it certainly wouldn't be moving fast enough for them. I, I appreciate that because uh, it wouldn't be for me either if I was in their shoes. When students from our program uh, interviewed uh, African Nova Scotian Affairs Minister Tony Ince, who you mentioned, um, in 2016, um, he said that he knew of people from his community um, who wouldn't come forward with land title claims because they didn't uh, trust government. So the question would be, um, as you see it, why don't people uh, trust government on, on this issue? I don't think it's just this issue. Uh, I would say to you that people don't trust government uh, uh, through uh, our history. Uh, um, uh, listen, we've, there's built-in systemic racism that's been built in to many of our institutions. Uh, we need to say what it is. And if you have been, or your family, or uh, your community, has constantly felt held back, held down, uh, not cared for, not respected uh, by governments, uh, you wouldn't trust the government either. Uh, and our goal or our job is how do, how do we work on that? Accepting that I can't change the past in the sense that I can't change the experience of the past, but you have to be able to hopefully have community believe what you tell them you will do. Um, in July, the, uh, the province's Supreme Court uh, ruled that uh, systematic racism played a part in the case of uh, Christopher Downey, who's trying to get uh, legal title to his land in North Preston. Uh, Justice Jamie Campbell also said that the government was wrong to make uh, Downey prove that he'd lived on the land for 20 consecutive years um, when applying for the title, saying, quote, uh, consistent application of an unreasonable standard uh, cannot make it reasonable, unquote. Um, so the two-part question would be, uh, do you agree with um, Justice Campbell on this? And um, what is your government doing to make it easier for African Nova Scotians uh, to get land titles? So uh, I agree 100% with, uh, with Justice Campbell. Uh, it was wrong for uh, uh, that person to be questioned about whether or not uh, they lived on the land for 20 years. Typically, what happens, uh, in order to ha claim title, you have to have been on a place for 20 years. Uh, this family, I think, was on 19 and a half. Uh, and uh, the process, as it was working its way through, the person just applied what was a normal process when someone tries to claim title of a property. Not recognizing, not uh, following through on not only the spirit of what we were doing as a government, but the intent of what we were doing as a government. Uh, and that was to correct an historic wrong and, and by the way, the justice had every right to chastise our government for, being, uh, for that being before him. Uh, if I had been in his shoes, uh, I would have done the same thing to any government that had brought, it to the, that had brought this to court. So at present, there'll be, there's three people who will be um, contending for the le liberal leadership, which will make them the premier. What, um, what advice are you going to give uh, to them specifically uh, on this issue, or if they were to seek your counsel on this particular issue? What you well, all three of them who were seeking this issue were at the cabinet table uh, when this process came through, uh, fully supporting and support uh, the position of government at the time. Uh, we will, uh, my, my clear advice to them will be continue down the path of trying to make this province more inclusive, uh, trying to make uh, uh, people feel part of it, not uh, just being in it. Uh, and uh, that will be to continue on the path of, of opening up opportunity uh, for uh, black Nova Scotians, indigenous Nova Scotians, uh, new Nova Scotians uh, who are coming to live here to see themselves uh, in, our, in our collective institutions. Uh, that's where I think we'll have our greatest success. So I, my, my advice to them would be to continue to open up this province. And, and be open, be caring. Let our actions be what our words are. Uh, and uh, you'll have heard this before and you'll hear it again, actions speak much louder than words. Uh, and I say this to you, uh, people don't necessarily believe politicians. Uh, you have to prove yourself. And, and if you say something, you have to follow through on it. Uh, I'm proud of the record I have here. 
Um, and I hope that, uh, you know, the next government and governments thereafter will continue on the path of a more inclusive province. Thank you very much.